managing your emotions. So when trading, you'll be facing a whole host of emotions that's tied to money at stake in your account. Because to most people, money is a very emotional subject. And trust me, as you trade, you're going to be feeling a lot of emotions, right? Greed, fear, doubt, frustration, excitement, hope. You're going to go through a roller coaster of emotions. And to be a winning trader, you have to learn to think and act contrary to your natural instincts and emotions. Because many of our emotional patterns cause us to lose money. The human mind is wired in such a way that will cause the average person to lose money. Why? For example, as human beings, we have a need to avoid pain, to avoid being wrong, right? And we have the need to be right, we have the need to like pleasure. And this causes most people to follow the crowd and buy high and sell low and lose money, which you should be doing the opposite, right? You should be buying low and selling high. At the same time, because of the fear of being wrong, what happens? When people see that the stock is going against them, they do not want to sell to cut their losses because they, they say, you know what, I don't want to take a loss, you know, so they avoid the loss by not taking the loss until the loss becomes really huge. So in the end, they have huge losses. And once they make a bit of money, they want to take some pleasure because they like to make money and they sell. So it causes people to get what? Big losses and small gains, which is the opposite of profitable trading. So in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to be conscious of your emotional patterns. Because once you're conscious of them, you can overcome them. And one of the best ways to trade very unemotionally, to detach emotionally, is to trade at a level of capital and risk where having a few trades does not hurt you emotionally. Right? I always like to joke that if every morning you wake up, for example, and you know, rush downstairs and you know, check your account and say, oh my god, you know, did, you know, did I make money or lose money? Or you're constantly checking your account, you're trading with too much risk or you have too much capital beyond your emotional threshold. The moment you get very emotional, you will definitely lose money because you don't think objectively. So you're going to have a small risk such that even with 5 or 10 losing trades, it doesn't affect you emotionally. And that's how you trade logically and profitably. So let's take a look at some uh, very common emotions that's going to affect you. The first thing is greed. Okay, Trust me, you're going to get greedy at times. And greed will, may cause you to raise your profit targets too high. Or greed may cause you to not take profits when you're supposed to take profits. And you stay in the trade too long. And this causes potential winning trades to become losing trades. There's an old Wall Street saying, bulls make money, bears make money, but pigs always get slaughtered, right? Pigs are greedy, right? So let's look at an example. On the left, I've got a chart where, for example, I, I place a buy order over here and I've got a profit target over there at 2R, okay? So let's imagine your rule says that you take profits at 2R, that's your rule. And sure enough, you, you place a buy and the price goes up and it hits your profit target and you get 2R, you get 2R profit, right? Now what happens after you exit with your profit? The price proceeds to go a lot higher, right? Now to most people, how would they feel? Regret. Damn it, I shouldn't have taken profit so fast. I should have taken it later. You know, I missed out. You know, they feel they were short changed, right? So they, they start to get greedy and say, next time I will not take profits uh, at 2R, I'll take it at 4R, or if it's going to hit my profit target, I'm going to raise my profit target. Now, guess what happens the next time? The next time, what happens is that uh, you buy over there, and you know you put a profit target that's too high, right? Say over there at 4R. Sure enough, the price goes up, but you know before reaching 4R, pfft, it goes all the way down, and you end up losing money. A winning trade became a losing trade because you change your rules because of greed. Okay? So that's an example. Second emotion that people feel a lot is fear. Okay? So fear can cause a lot of things, right? And one of the things is fear may cause you to take quick profits for fear of losing those profits. Now, some people think, hey, there's nothing wrong with taking a small profit. A small profit is better than no profits. Wrong. In trading, you can go broke by taking small profits. Why? Because if you take small profits, for example, like I said, 
The key to a trading success is to make sure your average win is more than your average loss. That's the, that's the key. So even if you're right half the time, you still make money, right? So when you lose, you lose one hour. You have to make sure that when you win, you win more than one hour. You have to win at least two hours to have a profitable system. But the trouble is some people, the moment they get some profits, like they get 0.5 hour profits, they take the profit quickly. They take the profit quickly. So if you take small profits, what happens? You don't allow your, your winning trades to achieve their fullest profit potential of two hours or more. And by doing that, your system may no longer have a positive expectancy. Why? Because the profits on your wins are not enough to cover the losses on your losing trades that will happen eventually. So if you take a look, for example, on the left, you can see, imagine you've got a trader who, who gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trades. And out of eight, he's got five wins and three losses, right? That's a good win rate. He's, he wins more than he loses. But he, at the end, he still loses money. Why does he lose money? Because every time he wins, he wins uh, 0.5 R or 0.2 hour. But each time he loses, he loses one hour. So the wins can't cover the losses. You end up with a negative expectancy. So why does this happen? All right, let me give you some examples, right? So let's imagine uh, this is your first trade. And what happens is, um, let's imagine you place your, your buy order over there, your stop loss is here, and your target profit is here. And sure enough, um, your target profit is 2R profit, your stop loss is minus 1R, right? As usual, okay. So let's imagine the first trade you buy over there, it goes up, goes up, and before it reaches the profit target, what happens? It comes all the way down, hits your stop loss and you end up with minus one R, and you go, damn, it's a losing trade. Ah, it's okay. Next one, right? So you go for the next one. And the next one, what happens? You buy, sure enough, it goes up, and it goes to, again, maybe 1.2 R, you say, yes, you know, I'm profitable, but before it reaches the profit target, boom, hits your stop loss again, damn, another loss. Okay, next trade. Say the next trade, it happens again, right? It goes up, and before it reach, reaches the profit target, it comes down. What has just happened? You got three losses in a row. So you got minus three R. Now, what do you think that does to most people if that happened three times? You start to say, damn, you know, I had some profits. I had one R in profits, and it is gone, right? So, you know, next time if I get a one R profit, I'm going to take it. And therein lies the problem. The moment that happens, you're screwed. Okay, why? Because say the fourth trade is a winning trade. Okay, because remember, you're going to have wins and losses, right? So after three losses, the next one, the next few are going to be wins. You know, it's statistics, it's probability, right? But what happens now? Now you're fearful of losing what you have. Okay, so the next trade, what happens? You buy over there, your stop loss is over there, your target profit is 2 hours as usual, right? Now, now, what happens this time? This time you buy... The price goes up, the price goes up, and it hits that 1.2 R, it starts to come down. It's like, oh, I've seen this movie before. It's going to come down, going to lose what I have. Oh my God, oh my God, I better sell, right? And sure enough, as it comes down, you sell quickly for fear of taking another loss, and you get 0.8 R in profit. And what happens after you sell? It, boom, goes up and hits the profit target of 2 R. In other words, this trade, you're supposed to get 2 R, you only got 0.8 R. And let's say it happens again the next time where you take a small profit, you take a small profit. So what happens? In the end, you, you take six trades, right, six trades. The first three, you lost three R. The next three, you made only 0.8 R. You end up losing money. If you had allowed the profit to be reached, even you get three losses and three wins, like each win is two R, you would have made money, right? So you've got to be conscious of these patterns because they will happen. Okay, now the next thing is hope, okay? Now in real life, it's good to have hope, right? Um, you know, hope you have good health, you know, hope your kids will study hard and hope your wife will not leave you, right? But in trading, you can never have hope. In trading, hope is for the hopeless. In trading, hope will cause you to lose everything that you have. 
right? Never have hope in the market. So why? Let me give you an example. So let's imagine it's the first scenario and you place a buy order there. Your stop loss is there at say, I don't know, $8.05, right? And what happens is the moment you buy, the price goes down, goes down, goes down and hits your stop loss. And right as it hits your stop loss, the price then proceeds to go up and hit your potential profit target. Now, how do you feel? You feel cheated, right? Say, damn, I was right on the direction. It just that it went down temporarily, hit my stop loss and it went up. And you say to yourself, you know what? The next time, I'm not going to put a stop loss. The next time, I'm going to put my stop loss further away so it won't get hit. And again, the moment you do that, you've screwed yourself for the future. Because what happens the next time? The next time, you buy over there, you place a stop loss over here, and what happens after you buy, right, it goes up, and sure enough, it goes down, it goes down, goes down, and it's going to hit the stop loss, and you say, hey, I've seen this movie before. I remember the last time it hit the stop loss, it went up higher. So you know what? I'm going to remove my stop loss. So you move your stop loss lower down because of this hope it will come back. And sure enough, it keeps going down. doesn't come back. doesn't come back. It's going to hit the stop loss again. And say, oh my God, you know, I'm going to lower my stop loss and give myself more room to be right. And it keeps going down, keeps going down. And until eventually you say, oh my God. Right? So instead of losing one R, you end up losing four to five R. And that's why I know people who are right 80% of the time. But they still lose money. You know why? Because out of 10 times, they are right eight times. The eight times they are right, they take small profits. But the two times they are wrong, they have huge losses that wipe out all their profits because they have that hope and they don't take that small loss. Right? They keep hoping to be right. Okay, so be conscious of all these patterns. It's really, really important. Handling winning and losing streaks. Now, if you look below, you will see a typical equity curve of a trader over 100 trades. And what you notice is, for example, you may start with uh, $10,000 over here and grow your capital over time to say fifteen dollars or $20,000 over 100 trades. And if you take a look at how your capital grows, it doesn't go up in a straight line, right? It goes up and down just like the price of a stock. So remember that the overall outcome of your trading journey will not unfold linearly. It's not a straight line going up. So do not look at the trading outcomes of a certain small period and extrapolate them into the future. What does that mean? So it means that, for example, if you happen to go through a losing streak over here, a series of losses, like five or ten losses in a row over here, or over here, and over here, don't get freaked out. Some people, after they get ten losses, they might go, go oh my god, if this happens, keeps going on, I'm going to lose everything. And they extrapolate that to the future. At the same time, if you get a winning streak over here where you have a series of 10 or 15 wins, don't get too excited and get carried away and say, my God, you know, if I keep this up, I'm going to be a millionaire next week, all right? And they get too excited. So in the long run, winning and losing streaks tend to even out each other. And the long run of distribution of wins and losses are what makes us profitable. Long run performance has little or nothing to do with the luck factor. So I can tell you that in the short term, when you trade, it's a bit of luck where you may get five wins in a row or some bad luck, four, win, uh, four losses in a row. But in the long term, it's got nothing to do with luck because the, the bad and good luck will tend to even off each other. And in the long term, it's all about statistics and probability that will guarantee your success. Let me just um, summarize some common emotional mistakes that newbies make in trading. So be aware of it and avoid it. Okay? The first uh, emotional mistake people make is this. They rush into new trades after experiencing a few losses in order to win back the money quickly. So after they lose money, they say, you know, I've got to keep quickly get some new trades to make up the losses. And that's when they take poor trades or low quality trades that do not meet their rules. Another common mistake is, could be the opposite, where after they take a lot of losing trades, what happens? They have doubt and uncertainty in the trading strategy and they are afraid to take the next trade, right? So the moment they want to take the next trade, trade their handshakes and they go, oh. and the moment you can't take the next trade, you will not succeed. If you keep taking the next trade, eventually you will succeed. 
So never be paralyzed by a loss or a series of losses that are inevitable at times. The next thing is to stay in a losing trade, hoping things will turn around, like what I mentioned just now. So remember, there's no hope in the market. Hope is for the hopeless, right? On a trade-by-trade -trade basis. Next, losing traders tend to focus on short-term results and lose their perspective. So think about the big picture and think statistically. Next, losing traders fail to stick to a consistent risk per trade percentage. Like I said, for you to be profitable, you have to stick consistently to your risk per trade of 1%, for example, or 2%. Do not increase your risk when you're greedy and reduce your risk when you're fearful. Losing traders constantly change their trading systems or strategies after experiencing short-term losses. This is very common for new traders that again are in search of that holy grail. The moment their trading system hits some losses, they start to say, you know what, I'm going to change this indicator, I'm going to you know, change this rule, and as they keep changing and going around in circles, or worse still, you know what, I'm going to trade Forex now, I'm going to trade options now, I'm going to trade futures now, I'm going to trade stocks now, and they go around in circles, never ever making money, because they don't stick to a system long enough for that system to work its statistical magic in their favor. Next, losing traders tend to focus on their account balance instead of following the system. Right? They keep looking at their balance, or oh, my money's going up, it's going down. And when that happens, you get emotional and you don't follow the system. Next, losing traders get emotionally affected by losses. Right? Uh, when they get losses or their, their account's not doing well, they, they get stressed, they get fearful, they get frustrated, they lose their confidence. And the moment that happens, guess what? They can't succeed in trading. So you've got to detach emotionally in trading. Next, losing traders blame and find external reasons for their losses. You know, I lost money because the market is bad. I lost money because the Federal Reserve increased interest rates. I lost money because Donald Trump won the election. Bullshit, okay? As long as you blame people, you will never succeed in trading because you'll always be something to blame. Next, losing traders tend to desire to take revenge on a stock or they want to take revenge on the market after experiencing a loss. So if they bought a stock and they lost money on that stock, they say, you know what, heck, I'm going to Keep holding that stock or buy that stock again until that stock makes me that money back. <laughs> i got news for you. The stock doesn't know who you are. Okay, <laughs> So, don't get personal. Next. Losing traders trade with methods that do not suit their personality. And too often, people will hear about another trader's success you know, out of envy or you know, whatever it is, and they feel compelled to copy that person. And that's when it doesn't work. Because you've got to follow a system that fits your personality of trading. Now, on the other hand, let's take a look at the habits of successful traders. Here's a summary. Habit number one. Successful traders always take action when there's a valid and high probability, probability signal in their trading system. They don't let fear control their decisions and interfere with their trading. Successful traders take responsibility, learn from their mistakes, and they move on. They don't dwell on setbacks. I love the metaphor uh, from that show, Finding Dory. You know, that show from Finding Nemo, Finding Dory. And Dory was this fish uh, that had a short-term memory. And she'll just go on, keep on swimming, keep on swimming, keep on swimming. Right? So I find that to be a good trader, you have to be a bit like that fish. When you get, you know, some wins or losses, it doesn't affect your psychology of taking the next trade. You just keep on swimming, keep on swimming, keep on trading, all right? With no memory of the past. Next, expect and accept losses as part of the trading game. You have to lose to win in trading. And focus on following the trading system and not, again, the immediate account equity or balance in your account. Successful traders think statistically and keep a long-term perspective. Successful traders focus on being consistent. They consistently follow the predetermined entry and exit rules and do not listen to other people. Successful traders are patient. They wait only for high probability opportunities. So remember guys, the biggest enemy to your trading success is not the market, it's you. And a good trade is one where you follow the rules of the system and not one that necessarily led to a short-term profit.